There we go. Can you hear me now? Can you play? But play nice and loud. Yeah. I get that request also. <laughs> I like loud. It's good. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, if we're underground, then we got to pray silently. But praise God that we can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. tonight. Amen? Amen? So, Father, we just praise you tonight. And Lord, we lift up all those that are God in need of a touch tonight. Father, we ask you to touch their bodies. Lord, those that are hurting, those that are struggling with their health, those that are standing tonight, God, in your word. Father, we speak life over them. We speak your word, God, of healing over every person. Lord, whether they're here tonight, whether they're not here tonight, Holy Spirit, touch them tonight, wherever they are. Touch them and let them know that the Spirit of God is alive and well. And God, that your healing power does flow today. And it does move and that you are the healer. You are the Lord that healeth us. You are the Lord, our healer. You sent your word and healed our disease. You are the Lord, our healer. And we praise you tonight for that, Father. Lord, I thank you for your anointing, God, on the, hear, on the ears that ears will be anointed to hear what the Spirit is saying tonight. Father, my lips will be anointed to bring your word and only your word tonight, Father God. And I thank you for that, Lord, for clarity, Lord, for precision tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, so good to see everybody here tonight. And tonight I just want to talk a little bit... Um, I always think, what are you going to name your what are you going to name your message? And I'm like, you know, you name it whatever you want to name it after you listen to it. I just want to talk a little bit, but I just want to talk a little bit on. I want to encourage you as believers to take your authority as believers, because sometimes you know when you you just listen to preaching, and today we have great opportunity to hear all kinds of teaching. You know, YouTube is awesome. Um, all kinds of sources for listening to teaching. But be careful what you listen to, you know? Be careful how you listen and what you listen to. 
because not everybody is preaching the faith that you need to hear. And so, and they may be teaching a whole lot of good things, but then they'll throw some, some phrases in there and that kind of, you know, if you're not careful, you're gonna pick those phrases up. And, and one of those phrases that I hear a lot is, God wouldn't have allowed it to happen if he didn't have something better for you. God wouldn't have allowed it to have happened. So here you have a car accident, everybody smashed dead, but God wouldn't have allowed it to happen if he didn't have something in that for you. Like, you know, seriously? You know, really, ask yourself the question, really? Really? What kind of a God is that? You know, then you walk around telling people, God's a good God, he's awesome, but yeah, he, he had a purpose for that. It, it doesn't match if you read the word of God. You know, and then another thing people say is, well, God's in control. Be careful of that. First of all, know the word. No. He's not in control unless you have given him control. All right? There's a big difference there. Just say God's in control. Well, that train wreck happened. God's in control. They got cancer. Well, God's in control. No. He's given you control. So let's just go right to the very first book. Because God started this off right in Genesis 1, verse 26. So I hope you have your Bibles. And I hope you have your highlighters and pens and... I hope you take notes and write in your Bible. Like, I don't know who pastor used to say, if you can't write in your Bible, throw it away and get a new one. Yeah. Get one that you can write in. Because yes. this is your manual. Yeah. And right in verse Matthew or Genesis 1, 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Do you see that word? Let them have dominion. What does that mean? It means we're supposed to have dominion. He tells a whole bunch of things, and then he says, over all the earth, let us have dominion. Yeah. We know we're not supposed to have dominion over people, but we're supposed to have dominion on this earth. Yeah. Okay? And so you have to know that, that, that you, have, you have dominion power that God has given to you. Yes. And so all the things that happen, they're not just because... God allowed it to happen. He must have had a plan for it. He must have had a purpose for it. Because you know what? If you take that kind of a, if you take up that kind of a um, mindset, you're just going to allow anything to happen. Because after a while, you don't know anymore well, what, what was God and what wasn't God. And you have to be clear. And you have to know this was God and this was not God. So you're saying, Nellie, we never suffered? No, I'm not saying that. There is persecution. But it is for the word's sake. It is for the word's sake. All right? Sickness is not for the word's sake. God doesn't throw sickness on you. Then come along and say, I came along to heal you. Because that would mean he's working against himself. And that's confusion. And the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. So anytime you hear a teaching or something that you, you see something, the words should always be our final authority. Make the word your final authority. Do I know everything? No, I know very little. But I just know that the answer is in the word of God. And as long as I do what Romans 12, verse 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every day is an opportunity to transform my mind. Because my mind will think one way. Your mind will think one way. Our mind is programmed to think death. Our mind is programmed to think like the world. And that's why he said... Be renewed in your mind. Renew your mind. Renew it with the word of God. Read it. Take it in. Listen to teachings. Whatever. Take every source you can. But renew your mind so we can think like God thinks. You know, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said, it says, he said unto them, go into all the world. And that word go is a command. And I have to have authority to obey that command. I can't obey a command unless somebody has authority to tell me to go do it, right? Yeah. So he said, go into all the, wor all the world. And he said, preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, cast out demons. And he, you know, he said a whole lot of things that we were to go do. That was his last command to us. But he, he gave us the authority. In Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, Jesus said, I'm just going to paraphrase this, but... All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore. Go, therefore. You should write in your Bible, 
transfer of power under those words. So that you know, next time you read it, when you read, go therefore, there was a transferal of power. Jesus said, I'm going away, but I've given my church power. Yes. And so for the church to sit and say, well, God wouldn't allow it to happen if you didn't have some plan for it. You, there's, you gotta have balance in that. You know, what is that statement relating to? It's relating to somebody who's fighting a disease, somebody who's died of a disease. That's not God allowing it. God has given us authority over those things. Because we know that sickness is not from God. Amen. Because in the Bible it says Jesus went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. He was healing all who were oppressed of the devil. It tells us where the oppression came from. Amen. Why he healed, who he healed. He healed everyone who was oppressed of the devil. Is there any little bit of healing that might just be, or any little bit of sickness that might be from God? Not likely. No, no. You have to settle these things. Because if not, you're going to sway back and forth. You're going to be in one day believing God for healing, and the next day you're like, well, I think God allows this to happen because he must have a bigger plan for me. There's another scripture that, that a lot of preachers, a lot of people love to just throw out, and that is that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. You know, I was, I was abused. You know, a man, I heard a man took a, and this is a true story, a man kidnapped a, a, a mother and her daughter, took them way, way out into the back road somewhere. He raped them both. He shot them both, killed the daughter. The mother still lived. She came back, and she said, we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Seriously? I mean, you, you have to have, have some kind of strange teaching to believe that. See, the world doesn't even believe that stuff. And that's why many of them don't want to even know this kind of a Jesus. Because if this kind of a Jesus allows this stuff to happen, and then now I have to worship him, I'd have a hard time to worship somebody like that. I had a very hard time to worship the Lord when I was a teenager because I was brought up in a in a very strict church, it was a very, um, what do you call it? You know, when everybody is like, you know, you look this way, you talk this way. Very controlling church. Uh, there is a name for it, but legalistic church. That's what it was, very legalistic. And so, you know, everything, this happened, that happened, and things happened to me. I was sexually abused as a child, and, and nobody would talk about it, touch it, or anything. If you did dare say anything about it, it was your fault. So you didn't talk about anything like that. You know, and I grew up as a teenager hating God. Because I thought, if this is God, this is how I have to live my life. This is God. I want nothing to do with you. And I didn't for many years. I didn't. And I cursed God. But in my heart, I didn't know that God. I knew a twisted God that I had been taught. I didn't know the real God. You know, with the real Jesus, please stand up. He did. You know, he did one day. He stood up in my heart, and I came to know him. But so many people have twisted teaching. So teaching like that does not win people to Jesus, you know? So we have to know that when we hear these phrases, you know, all things work together for good. Let's go back. And we've been taught quite a bit about that scripture. It's in Romans 8. Uh, it's from 26 and 7 to 8 few of those scriptures, but it talks about praying in the Holy Ghost. It talks about when you have a situation and you don't know how to pray anymore. When you pray in tongues, you pray in the Holy Ghost, because it says the Spirit knows all things. And when we don't know how to pray for as we ought, the Spirit comes along and He makes utterance through us with groanings that can't be uttered in, in you know, our English vernacular or French or whatever language your mother tongue is. And that's when the Holy Spirit comes. And it says he intercedes for us. Right. And if you spend time doing that, then you can know that all things work together for good. Because the Holy Spirit will show you how to pray. Yeah. There are scriptures that, that are weapons. Like every scripture could be a weapon. But for depending what kind of war you're in, weapons, there, there's different weapons used. If your enemy is far away, you're not going to use as a gun that only go has a small range. You're going to use a gun that goes far. Well, the Word of God is like that. The Word of God is a weapon. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, go forward with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's a sword. But you have to know which sword to use. Do I use the big one or do I use a little one? 
What sword do I use? And when you pray, the Holy Ghost will give you the scriptures what to pray for your situation. Yes. And you have to just spend time with the Lord. Yes. Everything with the Lord, it does take diligence. It does take commitment. It, it, you know what? People want an answer so quick today. Everything is drive-through, you know? If you, if you go through uh, Tim Hortons and there's 20 cars in front of you, you want to jump over those cars. You want to smash them. You're like, I wish I had a big truck and move all the cars on the way. Why? I want my coffee now. You know, we're, a, we're a, I want it now thing. And we've gone to God like that. It's like, I want my answer now. Now, God, now. What, 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 what? No. God's saying, I'm a God of all patience. He's called the God of all patience. But he said, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you search for me with all of your heart. And so when you're in a situation, you pray. You say, Lord, I don't know. I don't know how to pray anymore. I, we just shared a few Sunday nights ago. There's a young lady here. And she got filled with the Holy Ghost. After everybody left, you know, we were here for quite a while. And she got filled with the Holy Ghost. And I told her, and I said, you know, there's times. I said, do you ever have times when you don't know how to pray? She's all the time. She's all the time. I don't know what to pray anymore. So I'm losing my mind. I don't know what I, I, I don't know what to pray. And I said, that's when the Holy Spirit kicks in. I said, that's when you start praying in tongues. I said, would you like that gift? She said, I think so. I said, you know so. <laughs> I know you want it. I can tell you you want it. It's the best gift you've ever had. And so, anyways, this is the first time this ever happened to me. We ministered to her, me and Kathleen were here, actually. And, uh, you know, I started praying in tongues and getting her to pray. And she was just trying to struggle because she was thinking out of her head, how do I do this? I said, it's not in your head. It comes out of your belly. But I said, do you like singing? She said, I love singing. I said, let's just sing in the Holy Ghost. And she started singing in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is the first time I ever, you know, was able to help somebody get filled with the Holy Ghost by singing. I was like, good, I got another tool. I know another way how to do this now, you know. But this, this person is now equipped with a, a supernatural power that God can come in. And so when you do that, then you know that all things will work together for good. But you better be praying in the Holy Ghost. You better be seeking God with scriptures to pray. And know, because God will help you and he will turn things around. But you have to you have to know these things. And so just being a casual Christian Christian that comes to church maybe once on Sunday morning, it's gonna be very hard. If you go to the gym once a week, anybody go to the gym here? What happens if you go once a week? Not good, I heard somebody say. Or how about if you like me? You work out five days a week, you do it for three weeks, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, done with that. I'm so tired, I can't even walk, I can't lift my legs out of bed. This is ridiculous. And then I go for three months with nothing. Well, if you're that kind of a person who goes to the gym, guess what? It isn't going to work. It ain't working. Okay? You have to be consistent at it. It's the same as with God. You have to be consistent. You have to desire God, you have to want God. You have to want his word. Am I saying you have to be in church every time? No, but you definitely have to seek the Lord with everything you got. And so God says another scripture in Psalm 115, verse 16. It says, the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's. I'll give you a minute to get there because, you know, I, I, always, I like it when people get scriptures and then, they, and then they don't give me time to get there. And I'm like, hold on. Because you know what? You've got to see them. Your eyes got to light on these scriptures. Give you time to even underline them, highlight them. I have them all written in my notes, but it's good to give time to go there. So 115 verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Another translation says, the Lord has kept the heavens for himself, but he has given the earth to us humans. Right? So I'm talking about having dominion. I'm talking about that God doesn't allow everything to happen that we see, okay? Pick your ears up when you hear that kind of statement, ask yourself, okay, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about something horrible that happened? You know, my divorce that I went through, my, my sickness that I went through, that God allowed that? No, I gotta know what is of God, what's not of God. But he said, the earth he has given to us humans. So we have dominion over this earth. You know, if I, let's say I have a, I give you a car. Eileen, I give you a car. But I'm keeping the keys. Because I, I just don't know when I want you to drive it. But it's your car! Is it your car? <laughs> Not really, because you don't have the keys. 
You know? So it's like saying, well, he gave us the earth, but we really don't have any authority in this earth. We just got to case her out. The devil slaps you one way. I go this way. He slaps you another way. We go this way. We just go with whatever punches he throws us. No, we don't. No, we don't. We take the word of God, and we fight with the word, and we stand up. Because God has given the earth to us humans, and we have to do dominate in this world. We have to take dominion in this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Second Corinthians 4, 4. And it says, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded? Whose, God, whose mind the God of this age? So we know from that scripture that Satan is the God of this world. with small g. You have, to, you have to understand, he has power. He's got a lot of power, but he is not all powerful. And he doesn't have all dominion. And you got to know that. You gotta know your rights, and if you don't know who you are as a Christian, you will get whipped. I, I was reading the scripture in front of me, verse three, and it says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. And I, I just happened to look that word up, perishing. And it, it, means, it means to suffer loss. It says to die, to suffer complete ruin and destruction. And I had to ask myself, have I ever had anything in my life that died? And I had to say, yes. And I had to ask myself, did I ever have anything in my life that I suffered ruin and I suffered, destru suffered destruction in my life? I did. And it says, if the gospel is veiled, and it's it means hidden. It means hidden to those who are perishing. You know what? Why, why, why am I perishing? Because the gospel was veiled. And, it, and God just showed me like it was the gospel, the truth is there but you know when you veil something it's like you have a big blanket over it and then you take it away so the truth is there but it's veiled and if you're perishing if you fall under these categories where stuff has happened to you you have to say, you have to, say to yourself you know what, there's parts of the gospel that is veiled to me it's hidden to me it's there but I don't see it I don't see it so I need to dig in this. I need to, because the God of the world is trying to blind my mind to see what's really in the word. To know that, no, God doesn't allow everything to happen. No, it doesn't. It's because I didn't take my authority and take my dominion. You know, in Ephesians chapter 6, he said, this is who you wrestle against. You're not fighting against human beings. You're fighting against people. You're fighting against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age. And he said, put on your spiritual armor every day. Because he said, you are in a war. And it doesn't mean you have to live in warfare all the time. That's, that's, that's another out of balance. You know, when you come to church and there's all these people, hey, you know, they're fighting all the time. And you're like, can I just worship the Lord today? I'm exhausted of fighting, you know. We're in a, we're in a war, but our war is, is sometimes comes from a, from a place of being seated with Christ. You know, when you're seated with Christ, you're peaceful. You know who you are. You know, if your children, if you have dominion over your kids, your kids know who you are. All you have to do is look at them. You give them a look, and they want something, you give them a look. Dad gives them a look, they shut up. <laughs> because they know if they push it, they're, good. they're in for it. And that's being seated with Christ. You know your authority. You know that these things don't just, that Satan cannot just do anything he wants to do. Because that brings confusion to the church. And that's why the church is, is really a lot is confused. It's not, are they bad? No, they're not bad people. But if you don't know the truth, you see, the Bible says the truth will set you free. It's not just the truth. It's the truth you know. It's the truth you know. And you have to really get that. It's the truth I know. There's a lot of things, you know, I've been hearing preaching for years and years, and then 20 years later I'll say, oh man, I just got this. Isn't this good? And, and pastor will say, yeah, I only preached that for 20 years now. I've, I've never heard it. I've never heard it. And you know what? There's many things you have never heard, even though it's been spoken from the pulpit week after week after week, because you haven't heard it, you know? So you've got to hear things. But where does, where does, you know, where does your faith come from? It comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. It just comes by hearing it over and over. So why do you go? You know, some people say, why are you going to that church again? That's all you do. You might as well make your bed there and live there. Blah, blah, blah. You ever been told that, you know? 
So I was like, well, that might not be a bad idea. But you know, I, I go, I go because I need God. You, you must be so good, I say. You must be so good that you don't need God. But I'm trying to get just like you. And I know the only way I can get like that is by going to church all the time. So that kind of shuts them up right there. So, you know. But no, I need to hear because faith goes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And I want to, if I have an opportunity to hear, and if you have an opportunity to hear, it would be such a waste to let it just go and not hear the word. You know? Because somebody might hear me say something tonight and somebody else might hear me say something else. But God knows what you need to hear. And so... You know, God wouldn't have allowed it to happen if it wasn't his will. No, that's not really true. You know, what if God went to Noah and said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And Noah went, nah, I don't think so. I'm not in the mood to build an ark today. Where would Noah be? See, where would there's some obedience involved in the word of God to make you in the right place at the right time. What if Noah said, I don't feel like building an ark. What's an ark? I've never seen an ark. What is that? You know, he had never seen an ark. But he had to do what God said. He had to rule the day. You got to rule your day because today is the only day you have. Tomorrow's a new day. So you got to rule your day and be in dominion over your day. And he had to go to work and build something he didn't even know how to build. There wasn't even a, a model of it anywhere. But you know, God gave him the blueprints, it says. He gave him the blueprints. And just like us, God has given us his blueprints. The word of God is his blueprint for every situation in our life. You know, the answer is in the word. You know, can I just go to this and find it? Well, probably not always. Sometimes that has happened to me in, in dire situations. I flipped the Bible open and there was the answer. You know, especially when I was younger, that happened quite a bit. And I thought, this is awesome. What's wrong with you guys? You know, all I got to do is just go, well, there it is. You know, this is so awesome, you know. Oh, God really speaks to me. Well, that, that lasted for a little while until God said, now grow up and get your nose in the Word and start digging around and start learning some things. So sometimes, you know, we want a model of how to pray for every situation. But God says, seek me. Seek me. If you search for me, you will find me if you search for me with all your heart. Yeah. Seek God. Seek his Word because the answers are in there. And you got the whole, we have the Holy Ghost, we have the precious Holy Spirit to Amen. pray, pray out our, pray out our, our requests, pray out the things, the mysteries we don't know. We have the Holy Spirit to help us. And so I want you to turn this to James, I won't be real long today. James chapter 1, this is such a good scripture. So when somebody says, God, no, God allowed this to happen, he's got a better something for you. And you know something horrible happened, and you hear that? Pick up. Because James chapter 1 verse 13 says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Amen. And that word tempt means tempted, tested, and tried. So let's read it over again. Let no one say when he is tempted, tested, and tried, I am tempted and tested and tried by God. Amen. For God cannot be tempted tested and tried by evil nor does he himself tempt test and try anyone so the next time you hear that god allowed this horrible thing to happen you remember the scripture god is not tempted and tested and tried by evil evil doesn't come from him in fact in fact verse 17 says every good and perfect gift is from above healing is a good and perfect gift so I want you to get your hopes up. Are you believing God for healing? Amen. Many people are. Amen. Get your hopes up. Because every good and perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights. It didn't say a little bit of good and a little bit of the good, a little bit of evil. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. It didn't say that. It said every good and every perfect gift is from above. And God is not tempted and tested by evil. And he doesn't tempt and test and try anybody with evil. You know, when you go through a tragedy, that is evil. And God does not tempt you and test you and try you to, to go through that. So you need to know those things. So you need to repel those things when you're taught. And that's just basically mainly my, my 
lesson tonight in a nutshell that pick up on the things you hear. You know, I, I find that I, I can listen to somebody and they may use that phrase quite a bit. They maybe you say a whole lot of good things, but then they keep saying that and I'm like, after a while, I'm like, mm, I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm not, I'm not. I don't want my faith to be watered. Amen. I don't want my faith, you know, because the disciples were full of faith and all they did was have one conversation. Remember Pastor brought that up not long ago and with the Pharisees about that little son who was falling in the water and he was trying to drown himself and then he'd fall in the fire and the father said, why couldn't your disciples heal him? Well, they had one discussion with the Pharisees, and the Pharisees didn't believe in healing. They didn't believe in a resurrection. They didn't believe in, and it was a whole group of Pharisees, Sadducees, and all these guys, you know, all these people, the ites, all the ites, you know, parasites, gibbicides, blah, blah, ites. They're always fighting you, trying to tell you something different. But one conversation can erode your faith. Yes, sir. So you have to really guard your faith. Guard your faith. I, I guard who I listen to. And then I see young Christians and they're like, oh, I listen to so-and-so. And then I say, oh, I'm listening to so-and-so. And I'm like, be careful who you listen to. Yes. You know, okay. take, yeah. take counsel from somebody who's older, who's yeah. walked the path. Yeah. And say, who do you listen to? You have been serving the Lord for quite a number of years. Who do you listen to? You know, you've got elders in the, in the, over you, and they have walked the path, and if they walk with the Lord, then they've done something right. So they'd be worthy of going to and saying, who do you listen to, you know? So when I came here, I said to the pastor, you know, well, who do I listen to? I, I, I never heard about listening to anybody. I, I didn't know such a thing as listening to preaching. You know, I did, I, you don't know that stuff if you're in the world. You know, don't know that. So he gave me some names. You know, he gave me Brother Hagen. Kenneth E. Hagan, John Osteen, and I love that man. Oh, the preaching of that man, whoa, was amazing. And Brother Hagan still today feeds me. I still go to sleep many nights listening to Brother Hagan, just Amen. fall asleep with him preaching. You know, the, the, the word has been proven. It's proven. It's worked. It's produced. It's, it's, it stood the test of time. You know, it stood, the man stood the test of time, served the Lord for so many years. You can look at a person's life, we can, we're, we're, we're to inspect people that way. We're to look at their lives and say, okay, how, how, is, how is their life being? Can I look at their lives? Is there something in their life that shows that they have walked a straight path? And yes, there is for many of them. And, and then take heed to what they say. But don't just don't just be gullible and listen to anybody and, and every every doctrine and there's a new doctrine out, there's a new this one out, and there's a new church doing this, and there's a new, you know, yes, God said, and then they'll say, If God said, Behold, I do a new thing. Yes, he does a new thing, but it doesn't teach a new doctrine. He doesn't teach new word. It's the same word. He said, even if an angel uh, preaches you to any other preaches to you any other word except this word, he said, let him be a curse. Don't listen to him. Amen. So be careful who you listen to. Because we're we are in the last days, and there's lots of voices out there, and there's many good voices out there. But if you're just listening to a little bit of negativity in that sermon, that's enough to, you know. How many of you heard the story that James Dobbs had ever told about the brownies? Okay. He said uh, he had a, his son came to him one night and said, Dad, I want to go see this movie. And it kind of was a movie that was really not something that we would watch. You know, it maybe was, it wasn't R-rated, but it was whatever, 18, 14 plus. And he said to his son, no, I don't want you to go see. We don't watch those kind of movies. And he said, Dad, everybody's watching those movies. Can I just go? He said, no, son, we don't watch those kind of movies. He's like, please, please, Dad. So the dad said, no, because there's, a, there's garbage in them. And, but there's only one swear word in the whole movie, Dad. Can't we go? So the next night, his dad made some brownies. And he said, son, I made you guys some brownies. So the kids all came running. And he said, it's your favorite brownies. He said, I only added one ingredient that's different than what I normally do, dog poop. <laughs> and they all went, ew. Yes. He said, what? It's only one ingredient. The rest is all the same. It's all good. Yeah. And he said, that's like your movie. He said, that's like your movie. He said, it's all good except there's one ingredient. They wouldn't touch that. So be careful what you touch. Be careful because the flesh is strong. The flesh wants to yeah. hear all kinds of new doctrines and new this and that, but know what God's will is. God said he is not tempted and tested by evil. He will never tempt you and test you and try you with evil. Now you will be persecuted for your faith, and that's a whole different story. 
That's when you're standing for the word of God. And today, that is going to be up. It is already up. I mean, if you dare, in many churches, you're not even allowed to mention anything. You're not allowed to mention homosexuality. You're not allowed to marriage to man, to uh, mention anything like that. See, we have to stand up for those truths. We have to stand against them. Do we hate the people? Absolutely no. Absolutely no. No. Does God? No. No. It's sin, though. Their lifestyle is sin. And today, the world is very perverted with their, you know, their gender stuff. There, there's no more female and male. There's its and. And eyes, and I don't even know what you're called anymore. But you know, God said, "Let them be male and female." He said, "He created the male and female." We have to stand up for the word. We have that boldness. There, we will be persecuted for that. Okay, but know the difference between being persecuted for the word of God or just accepting anything, everything bad that happens. See, because when you have to stand against sickness, when sickness comes in your body, you have got to stand against it. It's not easy. And you can ask anybody who has stood against sickness and stood on the word. It, it's not easy. You've got to stand a long time. You've got to fight. You cannot. You've got to have your feet planted. You can't back off. You can't back off. There was, a, there was a long season I was praying for my daughter. And I didn't know if she was going to live or die. And I, I tell the Lord periodically, and I say, Lord, if she dies, I'll never blame you. Because I know it's not you. I know it's not you. I know your word is true. Many times come very close, you know, to losing her. But I, I just said, Lord, it's not you. And I stood on the word. And I listened to Brother Hagen and, and teaching on the believer's authority and take their authority. I listened to Billy Brim teaching on the authority and Gloria Copeland teaching on the believer's authority. What yes. is your authority? I learned that. How to be seated with Christ from Ephesians chapter 1 and 2. I'm seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. Devil, you are underneath me. I am far yes. above you. And I would, every morning I would say that. I am far above you. You know, drove everybody nuts around me. That hurt me. But I didn't care because I was in a fight. You know, when you're in a fight, you really don't care who hears you. You know? And I would, I would speak Ephesians out and I would, I, would, I would speak that word out and let it become that I would become persuaded by the word. So you have to be persuaded. You know, Paul said in, in Romans chapter 8, 38, he said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything can separate me from the love of God. Amen. He didn't just happen. He didn't walk in one service and hear nice music and say, I'm persuaded. No, no, no. It takes time to become persuaded yes. that this word works. This word is truth. God cannot fail. Titus 1, verse 2, God cannot lie. In Numbers, he says that God cannot lie. There's three Preach scriptures it. in the Bible that says God cannot lie. Yes. You know what? I had to look at them. I had to read them over and over. I had to write them out with long hand all the time. I had to post them everywhere. I had to keep reminding myself God doesn't lie. Yes, and I had to become persuaded. And it took years for me to become persuaded. First, I was hoping... You know, and I call people to pray with me. Pray with me, pray with me, stand up, help me, help me. I don't know how to pray. You don't know how to pray when you're a baby. It takes many years to learn to know how to pray. You, you don't become a seasoned warrior overnight. Anybody that's in the army, you not made a general after one year. You, you stay in there and you win your trustworthiness. And you learn how to fight. And you learn to become a man of valor and and not afraid and, and know that you can, you know, that you are going to, you are going to fight and give your life for your country. And you've said, you have got to give your life for the word of God and fight for those that depend on you. You have got children that depend on you. You've got spouses. You've got aunt and uncles that depend on you. You've got friends. You have got neighbors that depend on you. And your praying can make all the difference. And so you have to know that. But you have to know that God doesn't tempt and test and tries with sickness and disease. When that comes, be quick to say, that is not God. That is not God. You know, and you do everything to stand on the word of God. You stand on the word of God. You take the word. You wield that word. You become persuaded that God's word is truth. I will not die, but I will live. Amen. I used to say that over. Tanella shall not die, but live and declare the word of the work of the Lord. I still say it. She will not die but live. 
And when the devil screams at you and says, yes, she is, yes, she is, look at her, go look at Facebook, I said, I, my face is out of Facebook, my face is in the book. Yes. That's Amen. where my face is. I got mad. I just got mad one day and I said, Facebook, we're done. No, I can't speak for you and I'm not speaking for you. I'm only speaking what worked for me. But I said, I got my face. I have to keep my face in here because if not, I'm going to be moved. Because there's things coming by to move me, move me. I see pictures of this, and it moves me. I hear somebody write this, and it moves me. And it throws me off my walk. Yes. And so I have to keep my eyes glued on the Word of God. Yes. And, you know, the devil will say, you don't have much of a life. You know, all you do is go home. And the minute I go home from church, I watch Kenneth Copeland and Andrew Olmack. Then I go to bed. I wake up, and it's repeat. I press repeat, you know. Once in a while, I'll let myself watch HGTV, but I'm very limited. And I just say, this is not a religious thing. This is I'm curving my flesh, because my flesh would love to curl up on the couch and watch seven hours of HGTV. Is it wrong? No. It's, uh, it's good, clean stuff that I want. But... I want to get the word of me because HGTV is not going to help me pray when my children are in crisis. I need to know the word, so I just got to put my flesh under and say, well, some of you may have a problem with that. Like, no, I don't watch TV at all, whatever. Whatever your thing is, you know, I'm just sharing what my thing is. But I know that the word says that God does not test, tempt, and try anyone right. with evil. And any, every disease is evil. Every sickness is evil. It's not from God. Don't take it. I don't care what your children are going through. I don't care how sick your children are. I don't care how sick your spouse is. Stand on the word. Go down fighting anyways. Don't just go down lying down. You know what I mean? Go If you've got to go down, go down fighting. But stand on the word. Wield the word of God. And see how it works. And uh, I just want to read a... I can find my book here. I to put this little book on my desk today. And I just... I, really, the title didn't really intrigue me that much, but after about a week, I, I, I read it. It was very good, and I want to read a story, uh, and uh, this is uh, Brother Hagen wrote it, and he says, accidents, disease, sickness, death, and disasters come as a result of the fall of man. Their author is Satan. Adam knew no sickness before he knew sin and Satan. Okay. Now, Dr. John Alexander Dowie, how many of you have heard of him? Yes. He helped reintroduce divine healing to the church in the 20th century. He says, disease is the foul offspring of its father, Satan, and its mother, sin. In the 1870s, when Dr. Dowie was pastoring, pastoring a congregational church in a suburb of Sydney, a terrible plague swept through Western Australia. People died like flies. Years later, Dr. Dowie recalled how he sat in his study one day, his head on his arms, sobbing his heart out before God and asking such questions as, God, are you the author of sickness and disease? Did you send this terrible plague on this land? Are you going to destroy my whole congregation? Where did this plague come from? Who is the cause of it? Dr. Dowie had bur buried 40 of his congregation. Four more were awaiting burial, and he had just returned home from visiting more than 30 parishioners who were sick and dying. Then the words of the Holy Spirit inspired in Acts 10.38 stood before me, all radiant with light, revealing Satan as the defiler and Christ as the healer, wrote this man of God. See, one word from God. One word from God. You never know when one word is going to illuminate and that word is going to make you persuade it. And when you're persuaded, nothing can move you. Nothing can move you. My tears were wiped away, Dr. Dowie said. My heart was strong. I saw the way of healing, and the door there too was open wide. So I said, God, help me and now to preach the, the word to all the dying around and tell them how to Satan still defiles and God, Jesus still delivers. For he is just the same today. He did not have long to wait. Within minutes, two young men burst into a study, pleading breathlessly, Oh, come at once. Mary is dying. Dr. Dowie ran down the street after them, not even pausing to take his hat. <coughs> he was furious that Satan should have attacked this innocent young member of his flock. He found the girl in convulsions. As Dr. Dowie entered Mary's room, her medical doctor, having given up on her, was preparing to leave. 
He turned to Dr. Dowie and remarked, Sir, are not God's ways mysterious? How many of you ever hear that? God's mysterious in all his ways. That's not in scripture, by the way. The word of God, we think it's scripture, but it's not scripture. The word of God was burning in Dr. Dowie's heart. God's way, he thundered. How dare you call that God's way? No, sir, that is the devil's work. He challenged the physician who was a member of his congregation. Can you pray the prayer of faith that saves the sick? The doctor replied, oh, you are much too excited, sir. It's just best to say God's will be done. And he left, took his hat and left. Too excited, you know, just, no, no, no. It's easy to say God's will be done. It's easy to say God wouldn't have allowed this to happen if he didn't have something good for you. <laughs> Still furious at Satan's attack, Dr. Dowie prayed the prayer of faith. The girl's convulsion ceased immediately and she fell into such a deep sleep that her mother and her nurse both thought that she had died. She isn't dead, Dr. Dowie said to them. After several minutes, he awakened Mary. She turned to her mother and exclaimed, Mother, I feel so well. Remembering how Jesus had ministered to the little girl he had raised from the dead in scripture, Dr. Dowie asked, and you're hungry? Oh, yes, she agreed, I'm so hungry. He instructed the nurse to fix Mary a cup of hot chocolate and some bread and butter. Then he went to the next room where her brother and sister lay sick with the same fever. After prayer, they too instantly recovered. From that day on, Dr. Dowie ministered to his flock on divine healing and prayed for their healing. He never lost another member to the plague. Hallelujah. As I went away from the home where Christ as the healer had been victorious, Dr. Dowie wrote, I could not but have somewhat in my heart of the triumphant song that rang through heaven. And yet, I was not a little amazed at my own strange doings. And still more at my discovering that he is just the same today. And this is the story of how I came to preach the gospel of healing through faith in Jesus. Isn't that awesome? He didn't accept it that everybody had to die. He lost a lot of people. We've lost people too. We've lost people. And we've lost things in our life because we didn't, are we bad people? No. We just didn't know how to pray. We didn't know how to, how to fight and how to take the word and fight for it. Don't let the devil have your kids. Don't let him have your, don't let him have your health. Don't, don't. It's, 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 it's hard in a way, but it's not hard. It's harder to just be sick and put up with that every day and live through that. Yeah. But stop him and say, you're not taking that. You're not taking, Jesus paid for it. Didn't Isaiah 53 say that he took our sicknesses, our sins, our disease, our pain, our grief, our sorrow. He took it all on the cross. He took it. He bore it. Picture him there with all that. Picture him. The next time, you know, we, we just think, and they put a crown of thorns on his head. No. Those thorns went deep into his skull. That's mental illness. That's torment. His head was, his mind was tormented with pain when he was on the cross with those thorns going in his skull. Have you ever been pricked by a thorn? I brought in some beautiful flowers for the pastor the other day. They had thorns that long on them. And he went, oh, thorns. He went, ow. I said, can you imagine what Jesus felt like? We had a sober moment for a minute. But those thorns were put into his mind, into his head, which represents your mind. And he, and he carried torment. If you're tormented in your mind, mental illness is rampant today. Is it real? Absolutely. Just as real as cancer. But Jesus bore it. So you know how to pray. Jesus, you bore that thorn. You bore that thorn of crowns. You took mental illness. You took mental torment, anguish, pain, suffering. I'm going nuts. I'm going crazy. You bore that in your mind. And I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take it. See, as long as the devil thinks you don't know, he will fool you. So tell him, I know. I know now you're found out. No more. We're stopping this. We're stopping this torment. Amen. You can pray for others, but they have to really be in agreement. You still have a lot of power to pray for people. You can stop a lot of things for your loved ones. But, you know, it's better when they can get in agreement with it. You know? Now, if you have children and they're younger, and you absolutely have power. And you pray. You stop those things. You put a stop to them. Because James said, God does not tempt, test, and try anyone with evil. None of that stuff is from God. 
So know that, let that be secure in your heart, because you're gonna hear it. Probably even hear it here sometimes, you know, because we have different speakers and stuff. We don't know what everybody's gonna say, and, and everybody, you know, thinks a little different, and everybody sees the word a little different. That's their right. But you know your rights. And when you hear something, you just stand in your breath, I don't, I don't see that in Jesus' name. That, that, that ain't going in my mind. I, get up. Get out of my mind right now. It's like those peas pastor was talking about on Sunday. Mom putting peas in my mouth too. You know? Spit it out like peas. I don't want to, I'm not taking that. Talk to it. You gotta talk to things. You gotta talk to it. You can't think, you can't think thoughts to death. The only way you beat thoughts is by talking to those thoughts. Answer them. Talk to them. If you want a good teaching, Nancy Dufresne is an awesome teacher. It's called Answer It. Answer It. And she tells you, talk to those things. When pain is screaming at you, talk to it. Get out. Get out of my body. My body is the healed of the Lord. I am the healed of the Lord. That was the three things that Jesus did. He delivered us from spiritual death, sickness and disease, and poverty. Those are your three main redemptive qualities. They, everything else falls under those headings. And you fight for those things. Is it easy? No. You're going to have to be committed. You're going to have to be consistent. You're going to have to, you're going to fall down, but you're going to have to get up again and take the word and just keep going. You'll fall down again. You just get up. What does Proverbs say? Though a man falls seven times, yet he will get up. Jude said unto him who's able to keep you from falling. Amen? He's able to keep you from falling. So that was my main scripture that I really wanted you to just see that, you know, that, that God doesn't tempt us with evil. He doesn't tempt us with trials of, of, you know, going through torment with families and horrible things happening in your home and homes that are just messed up today and horrible things happening, you know. Dads and moms leaving their children and kids raising themselves. And that's, not, that's not God. That's not God teaching somebody. God's allowing it to happen just because you never know. You know, every president was in a bad home pretty well. That's actually the truth. The president of the United States, most of these guys all came from homes without fathers and, and messed up homes. But that's not God's will. That wasn't God's plan for them. And he said, I'm going to make them be raised in a home without a dad so they can become president. No, it just so happened. But these men persevered. They got a hold of Jesus Christ. Most of these men were Christians. So I talked about the presidents way back. And they found God, and with God's help, they moved up. But that's not God's will, okay? God, God's will is for us to have a good life, a good life. He died for us to have a good life. You're going to have to fight for it, you know? I wish I could tell you it's just easy. Just come to church, and you got it. You got it. Just sing a few songs, you know, you got it. It's not going to be that easy. But it's a good fight. That's why faith is called fight, the good fight of faith, amen? It's a good fight because you got God backing you up, you can go to sleep at night even though you're in a warfare. You still, God will give you blessed sleep. If you're in a warfare, you can't do that when you're out in the world. You don't have blessed sleep. You have tormented sleep. Yes. But you can be in a warfare, but you still can have blessed sleep. You still can do all your work and, and carry on in life because God gives you that inner strength. Because the Holy Spirit inside you gives you strength to be able to stand and move and work and do what you need to do as you're fighting your fight, your good fight of faith. Amen? Amen. So I'm yeah. going to leave you with that, and I, I hope there's some hope, some light at the end of the tunnel for you. I hope that there's a light at the, there's a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. But God's word is true. Just just know a few of the sayings that are really going, they're very prevalent in a lot of good teaching today. All right? Just know a few of these things. Don't take them. Spit them out like peas, and perhaps listen to somebody who's no more. Amen? Amen. 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 Good word. Do I want to do the offering? All right, sure. All right. Well, we're going to take up the offering tonight. Yes. Aren't you glad to be able to give? Amen. It's such a good thing to give. Yes, it is. You know, God said, he said, a, a, he instituted tithing right from the very start. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Honor God. He said, if you honor me, I will honor you. And we honor God with our tithes and our offerings. And uh, if you need an envelope, just put your hands up and the ushers will be ready to give you an envelope. But if you honor me, I will honor you. Honor God. It's not the amount you give, it's your 10%. You know, if your paycheck is $100, that's 10 bucks. 
my say, well, that's all you tend to offer. It's, it's your, what you give. It's your, it's your obedience to God that God looks at. It's your heart that he looks at. Your heart of giving. God, I'm so glad to give. I'm so thankful that I can give. I'm so, you know, don't be like me when I first came to Word of Faith Church. I didn't have a clue about offerings. And Pastor had his Oklahomian accent. So when he said, we count it as done, I thought he said, we count it as dumb. But I heard a lot about dumb teaching. And I would throw my money in the basket and go, there goes a piece of, you know what, essay, you know, because that's what I thought it was. I had no idea it had anything spiritual. Didn't have a clue that giving tithe had something to do with a, a spiritual sacrifice and an honor to God. It was just done until, you know, about a month or two later, I heard him say, done. I was like, done? Done? I'm sitting here confessing real loud. You know, I can be bold and loud if everybody else is talking. So I was saying, I throw my offering into the basket. I count it as done. And I say that every week. I'm like, oh, God, did anybody hear me? I'm so ashamed, but it's a good lesson. It's not done. It's done. It's done. God honors your giving. Amen? God, good. It's a cheerful heart is good medicine. So I'm glad it could make you laugh. So go ahead and take up the offering. And if you need prayer for anything, love to pray with you. I remember when I first came to Pentecost, we didn't. Yeah. there wasn't one service that the altar wasn't full of people asking for prayer. I don't know, I guess today we just figured we don't really need it. I don't know. Or we're praying really well ourselves and we're doing good. But if you do need prayer, we still believe in prayer. We still believe in laying hands on the sick and believe that they're going to recover. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We will see you Friday night. A war room Friday morning with Miss Kathy. And then Friday night we have Miracle Blessing slash Blessing Night. Yeah. And with uh, Pastor Emily Hu. So come and up for that. You'll be blessed. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for coming.